Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is a 12 volts, 150 amp power lithium iron phosphate battery. It was sent in from Humsink. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that was the correct pronunciation. Anyway, this is a Group 31 battery, and if you remember the lead time battery I reviewed on the channel a while back, that one is also a Group 31 battery, but that one is only 100 amp power. So if you need a higher battery capacity with the same physical dimensions, this Humsink battery definitely has its advantages. If you take a look at the product manual, you will see that it covers pretty much all the batteries in this series. And it covers all the usual stuff, as you can see here. Spec-wise, everything looks fairly typical for a battery of this size. According to the manual, the maximum charging and discharging current is rated at 110 amps, and we should be able to test that later in this video. The discharge overcurrent protection is rated at 300 amps, plus and minus 50 amps. And the charging overcurrent protection kicks in at 130 amps, plus and minus 20 amps. And by the way, the specs for our 12 volts, 150 amp hour battery is listed right here, as you can see. And as you can see on this side, all the batteries in the series all have overcharge protection, over discharge protection, high temperature charge and discharge protection, low temperature charge and discharge protection. All these come in as standard. Now, unfortunately, it does not have Bluetooth connectivity. And like the other batteries I have reviewed, you can connect up to 16 batteries in this 4S, 4P configurations, 4 in series, 4 in parallel, with a total maximum number of 16 batteries. Now, like I mentioned in my previous battery review videos, cycle life and long-term reliability are probably some of the most important specifications of any rechargeable batteries. But obviously, we won't be able to verify these specifications in this short video. Now, I have been using most of the batteries I received on a somewhat regular basis, and I will let you know if any of the batteries has major performance degradation over time. And by the way, one of the batteries I received appeared to start having some issues. Now, I'm not going to tell you which one that is just yet, as the battery still works to its specifications, but there were just some weird behaviors I ran into once in a while. And at this moment, I'm not entirely sure what was wrong with the battery just yet. It could well be just a BMS, but I think I need to do a little bit more investigation. Anyway, stay tuned as I will probably make a follow-up video at some point. If the battery fails in the meantime, I will definitely let you know. Anyway, back to the Samsung battery. I charged it up earlier using 20 amps, which is under the recommended standard 0.2C rate. Now, that is 30 amps. And the 20 amps charging current is just a limitation of the charger I'm using, nothing specific. The cutoff voltage I set was at 14.6 volts. During charging, the battery stayed pretty cool which is somewhat to be expected, given the relatively low charging current. To test the battery capacity, I chose the standard 0.1C discharge rate using my electronic loads battery testing feature. Unlike some other battery chemistry, LFP batteries' capacities are fairly constant, regardless of the discharge rate, and I used the 0.1C just for convenience. Not only the capacity is independent of discharge rate to a certain degree for LFP batteries, their voltage curve during discharge is also fairly flat. The battery terminal voltage does not drop significantly during the discharge cycle until the very end. And by the way, in the clip I'm showing you here, you can ignore the voltage measured by the electronic load, as there is some voltage drop across the wiring. I was able to capture the last few seconds of the discharging cycle on camera, and you can see how rapidly the voltage drops towards the end. Now, Unlike my previous tests, this time I actually set the disconnect voltage on the electronic load side to be significantly lower than the low voltage protection cutoff voltage on the battery, so that the discharging was cut off by the BMS when the battery entered protection mode. And you can actually see it here as the measured battery voltage dropped to zero. Now, from my discharging test, I only got 148.2 amp hour which is just shy of the 150 amp hour rated capacity, or roughly about 99% of the capacity rating. Now, this is actually the first LFP battery I tested that didn't quite achieve its advertised capacity, but it is fairly close. Also, this is the first 150 amp hour battery I'm testing here, so I'm actually not sure whether this is typical or not. I guess it's not. But if you have a 150 amp hour Humsink battery and had done some capacity testing, please leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what your measure capacity is. All right, I just charged it up again after the capacity test. 
And let's actually take a look at the internal resistance of this battery next. I didn't see any mentioning of the internal resistance in the specifications. But let's actually check it out with the Fenersi HRM10. I did a review of this internal resistance meter a while back, and actually the meter is quite decent. I will leave a link to that video in the cards up here. And you can see here the measured internal resistance is just about 6 milliohms. According to the manual, the maximum continuous discharge current is rated at 110 amps. So let's actually verify that. Now, you have seen me using this setup before when testing other batteries. Anyway, I have a couple of inverters here just because one might not be powerful enough. And on one of the inverters, I connected a small electric heater. And on the other inverter, I have another electric heater connected via a variac so that I can have fine control over the power draw. And here I have a clamp meter monitoring the battery output current. The clamp meter I'm using is the O1 CMS 101, which I have done a review before. Now, after using this meter for a while, I actually noticed something. The reading actually drifts quite a bit. So I zeroed it out before, but right now you can see it's 0.1 amp. So let me actually zero it again before our test. And it probably will change again. At least right now it's zero. Anyway, let me first turn on the first inverter. Remember, this one actually is connected to a heater, and the heater is going to draw some current. So that heater at the moment is drawing around 10 amps. All right, let me turn on the other inverter here. And I'm going to crank up the Variac. And we'll go right to around 110 amps. So you can see that right now we're right around 110 amps. And now we'll let it run for a while to see how well it holds up. And we've been running like this for about 5 minutes now. Everything seems to be holding up. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the current a little bit more to see if we trigger any sort of protection. So let me do that. Let me change it to 120 amps. How about 130 amps? No protection yet. About 140 amps. Nope. Still hasn't tripped anything yet. How about 150 amps? Hmm, the protection still hasn't kicked in yet. I'm going to increase it a little bit more, 160. It doesn't seem like we're tripping anything. How about 170? Nope. Winder 80. So you can see here, we still have not tripped anything yet. I'm not sure if it's going to trip or not. Let's do 190. That's actually the alarm on my inverter here. So let me actually do something else. And I just turned everything off. By the way, you can see that O1 right now shows is 0.55 amp. Of course, everything is off. And that's what I was mentioning earlier, that there's significant drift when you leave the O1 meter on. That's something I discovered recently. Anyway, and by the way, I also just reread the manual. And you can see here, it actually says the maximum continuous discharge current is 110 amps. But it didn't say that we cannot exceed that. In fact, what it did say is the maximum over discharge current 
protection current is at 300 amps plus minus 50 amps. So that made me believe it actually doesn't have a maximum current limit. And what it's really limited by, essentially, is by the temperature of the BMS. So what you saw before was actually I was able to push the current to 180 amps, at least for a short period of time, and the battery didn't cut off. And I also took some thermal images, and you can see that the battery did heat up a little bit, but there's nothing major. So I'm guessing that you can probably run this battery for prolonged period of time for much higher current than the rated 110 amps, as long as the BMS stays cool. Of course, that depends on the environment temperature, depends on the time of the year, and some other factors. But you can definitely push beyond this 110 amps. Now, I'm not saying this is good or bad, but definitely this battery can handle much higher than 110 amps continuous discharge current. It all depends on the environment factors, the temperature of the BMS. That's actually what is controlling the cutoff. Now, this does pose an issue if, for example, the internal construction is not good enough. If the wiring, for example, is not thick enough, you could potentially run the risk of catching fire. Now I just powered on the inverters again, and this time we're drawing roughly 115 amps. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, you can definitely draw much higher than that. So what I'm going to do next is, while running the heater here at 116 amps, I'm going to try to start this power drill. And this drill would draw roughly 160 to 170 amps during startup. So that would put us well above the 110 amps rating. Of course, we'll have to see whether or not it cuts off. And by the way, the drill will be very loud. So let me warn you. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you can see that we handled the drill with no problem. So from the testing we have done so far, the Humsync 150 amp hour battery worked pretty much as expected, except that the measured capacity was slightly under the rated spec. Now, the main selling point in my opinion is that it offers 150 amp hour capacity for a group 31 size battery. I guess this is important for installations where space is a premium. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful. If you liked it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.